Sony calls out Battlefield 4 falling behind Call of Duty. Modern Warfare 2 might go free to play in December, Mass Effect 4 teasing has begun, and much more on This Week in Gaming. Earlier this year, Microsoft announced its acquisition of Activision Blizzard for a staggering $68.7 billion. Since then, different reasons have been argued for and against the deal. Activision's Call of Duty franchise has undoubtedly attracted the most attention. Microsoft's number one competitor, Sony, has pushed back on this deal as much as possible, claiming that if Microsoft were to make COD an Xbox exclusive, it would massively harm Sony's sales. This week, Sony went all out by stating that there's no other game franchise that can compete with COD. They specifically called out Battlefield and stated how EA has failed to produce a rival for many years. Sony also published interesting sales figures for both franchises. According to them, more than 400 million copies of Call of Duty have been sold on PlayStation, while just 88 million copies of Battlefield have been sold. This refers to the franchises, not just Modern Warfare 2 and 2042, and while many fans agree that Sony is simply stating facts, it does seem very aggressive to refer to their partner EA in this way. And of course, there's a lot more omitted nuances here, like that Call of Duty has produced a lot more titles than Battlefield in the same period of time. As for Call of Duty news, numerous leakers online are reporting that Modern Warfare 2 will host a free-to-play weekend sometime in December. It's estimated to take place between December 15th and the 19th, right after the Season 1 Reloaded update. This is apparently the first of many free-to-play weekends that will go live throughout the game's life cycle. It's unclear whether or not this free weekend will feature the game's single player, or just the multiplayer, as both Warzone and the new DMZ Extraction modes are already free-to-play. Not only would this pull many players who are still on the fence about buying Modern Warfare 2, but it'll also bite into Battlefield 2042's player base, which is also hosting free-to-play weekends in December. Ubisoft's beloved Splinter Cell series is being adapted to radio. The BBC, Britain's largest radio broadcaster, is adapting the game series into a drama show on their Radio 4 station. The series will start on the 2nd of December and features an original story. It'll follow the series protagonist Sam Fisher as he attempts to recruit and train the next generation of national security agents. The cast includes Adonis Anthony, Daisy Head, Will Poulter, and others. The series will run for eight 30-minute episodes arriving every Friday. CD Projekt Red has dropped the first trailer for The Witcher 3's next-gen upgrade. At first glance, the trailer doesn't look drastically better, but there's more to it. Ray tracing will greatly improve the world's lighting, and this update includes various performance enhancements. The trailer also showed off new content coming to the game, inspired by the Netflix series. A native photo mode will also be added, which will surely show off the title's refined graphics and lighting. The update is set to go live for free on the 14th of December for all owners of the game. Based on a new job listing, Netflix Games Studios appears to be developing a AAA third-person action RPG PC title. The recently announced Netflix studio based in Los Angeles is headed up by a former Overwatch executive producer. The job listing shows that the studio is searching for directors, art directors, producers, and more for its new PC game. The new title appears to be powered by Unreal Engine 5 and will feature the storytelling worthy of a TV show, according to the listing. Things are obviously very early in the development process, so this RPG could be a long way off. Though, it'll be interesting to see what Netflix can bring to the gaming world. The Callisto Protocol is an upcoming sci-fi horror set to release early next month. The studio behind it, Striking Distance, is helmed by Glenn Schofield, who previously co-created the Dead Space series. Many fans have been quick to point out the similarities between both games. The Callisto Protocol made headlines this week because of confusion around the game's seasonal pass. As detailed on its Steam page, the season pass will feature four components, the Outer Way Skin Collection, additional story DLC, a Riot Bundle featuring a new wave base mode as well as a permadeath mode. However, fans began to question things when they discovered the season pass would also add an additional 25 new death animations. 13 for the playable character and 12 for enemies. With much of the game's marketing focused on the new gore engine and death animations, fans were surprised to learn that many of those animations were behind a paywall. Schofield took to Twitter to change the narrative. He assured fans that the 25 death animations aren't being cut from the base game, instead they'll be created specifically for the season pass. He claims the devs will only be starting work on those new animations in the new year. 
Overwatch 2's Season 2 is launching on the 6th of December, and Blizzard have stated that they'll be releasing details on the new content over the coming days. Things will kick off this weekend with a new gameplay trailer for the Ramatra Hero. Following this, a five-part developer series will go live discussing the changes and additions with Season 2. A gameplay trailer and content roadmap will go live on November 29th, following the reveal of the new map on December 2nd. Devs have teased different nerfs and buffs for certain characters, so it'll be interesting to see how the game can be changed up for Season 2. Deep Silver will be hosting a showcase for their upcoming zombie action RPG, Dead Island 2, on the 6th of December. Dead Island 2 has had a very rocky development, having been passed from developer to developer since 2014 but it now seems like the game is finally about to hit shelves in April next year. Having originally been scheduled to launch next February, it has been pushed back to let the devs polish it more before it goes live. The upcoming showcase promises gore, action, and plenty of new gameplay. It's also set to reveal some of the game's new features and mechanics. Having waited so long, fans are eager to finally see what this game will look and play like. Halo Infinite's winter update and community-driven Forge mode have brought a new lease of life to the game. Players have been busy creating their own maps and content with the use of the powerful Forge mode, and we're seeing public opinion becoming more and more positive. The next content drop will be Season 3. The March 7th, 2023 start date should be taken with a pinch of salt though, as it has already been delayed in the past. Leaks online, however, do have fans excited. The leaks suggest three new maps will be added with Season 3. These new locations include a desert map, a high altitude base, and another map that looks very similar to the content already found in the game. Season 3 will also introduce a new DMR type weapon called the M392 Bandit and a new smoke grenade gas. Gadget. Star Citizen's developers revealed a new concept ship this week as part of the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo ongoing celebration and free fly event. The ship is called the RSI Galaxy. It has a modular interior that will let you customize its functionality. These modules will include a cargo module, a refinery module, and even a medical module. It'll be bigger than the already fairly sizable Constellation, making it one of the larger ships that players can utilize. What we know so far comes from the latest Inside Star Citizen episode, which was mostly a concept preview of the ship. Today, we're going to find out even more details, including the price for the concept ship. Before we move on to our next story today, let us know what you think of Sony's comments about Battlefield. Do you think Battlefield should step up their game and maybe even commit to a yearly release cycle, or is COD in a league of its own? The next entry in the Mass Effect series was announced in 2020. BioWare have kept details on this new game to themselves since then. However, every year on November 7th, the developers share a short video clip celebrating the series protagonist, Commander Shepard. His ID number was N7, so the annual event is referred to as N7 Day. This year, BioWare shared a short looping clip of what appears to be some sort of mass relay machine. Players dived into the clip, examining every detail. One YouTuber overexposed the footage, which gave him a small glimpse of what appears to be a reflection. The reflection seems to show the famous N7 red and white stripes, implying the return of Commander Shepard. Now, if you're looking for a video that shows a deeper dive on the newly flyable Star Citizen ships, check out this one here. We go deep into the Corsair and the new Cutter, which I think are fantastic new vehicles in the game. They're so detailed, honestly, just a pleasure to fly and look at. Check it out for sure. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.